is it too late to start YouTube in 2024? Competition is a real thing, but the demand for good content on YouTube is really higher than ever before. Over the next three to four years, the creator economy is gonna double and be a half a trillion dollar industry. It's just getting started and actually it's maybe one of the best times to start. In this episode, we're going to answer the question, is it too late to start YouTube in 2024? And we're going to talk about the pros and cons of starting on YouTube right now. I'm sitting here with Sean Cannell, who's been doing YouTube for 17 years, has three silver play buttons and a gold play button, and has built an entire 30 person company based on YouTube. So Sean, I think you are well qualified to answer the question, is it too late to start YouTube in 2024? Well, short answer is, it's not too late, but I don't expect anybody listening to this to just take that short answer. So if we unpack that from a couple ways, um, I've got some stats to share and then a list of pros, a list of cons. So let's actually start with the stats. Going into 2024, YouTube now has 2.7 billion monthly active users. That's a crazy number. 52% of internet users, period, log into YouTube at least once a month. So really, I think one of the mindsets and questions to ask is supply and demand. How much supply, how much demand of content is there on YouTube? And so competition is a real thing. We'll get to that later in the cons. But the cool, the good news is that YouTube, the demand for good content on YouTube is really higher than ever before. And it continues to increase because it increases at the rate of, new movies, new shows, new marketing tactics, new things in the real estate environment, new hobbies, new side hustles. Like there's just all, there's always new things people are interested in. And that's a lot of people. Well, another thing to know is that ask yourself, who's the largest YouTube channel, period? A lot of people's answer is Mr. Beast for a singular channel uh, and an individual, although he's a team now. He's up, you know, 200 million or close to that, maybe a little higher. Um, it's pretty big. It's not the biggest. You also have like E-Series. That's kind of an Indian channel. But I think maybe Coco Melon is the biggest. And I, I'm a pretty big Coco Melon fan these days. Blippy Coco Melon because I got a three-year-old. Um, and so when I think about, okay, if the largest channel on YouTube is, let's just call it 250 million subscribers, that is actually still just a drop in the bucket compared to 2.7 billion people that are watching YouTube monthly and logging in. Okay. And so what does that mean? It also means that as big as you think, when you think like everybody must watch this person, oh, my favorite YouTuber that's got millions of subscribers, everybody knows about them. No, they don't because there's so many diverse people. So when I do think about the opportunity, not everybody wants to watch Coco Melon or Mr. Beast. Not everybody likes his content. Some people want to learn. They want to be educated. They're into really indie type of music. They're into indie gaming, all kinds of different niches. So I just think it's like when you it's hard to wrap our mind around the billion number, 2.7 billion people. It's a lot of people to reach. And then the question is just like, okay, so how do I carve out my small piece of that pie? How can I even, one of the things we teach is how to make big money with a small audience, you know, how to really identify your niche. So that's thing one. I think some other stats to know is that YouTube is um, available in over 80 native languages. So there's like, and available in over a hundred countries, I believe. So, and maybe it's all of them, but I, but I'm, I'm kind of messing with the stat there. But the 80 languages thing is like, there's the YouTube Mexico channel, for example, which is different than YouTube.com in the US. And all of that to say is that the international opportunity is real. I spoke at VidCon 2023, the last one, and one of the biggest things on the industry floor was talking about just the international consumption, the international distribution. So if you want to start a channel in English, great. But if you want to start a channel in a different country or in a different language, that opportunity is massive in 2024 as well. Then you also think about TubeFilter has a old stat, and they haven't updated this one, but that over 200 million people have earned money in the creator economy. So do we need to learn some skills? For sure. Do we need to learn how to make good videos and hack the algorithm and all of that stuff. Yeah. But maybe a better way to articulate the amount of money to be made, not that that's the only metric of success. Should, can you start a YouTube channel as a hobby and have fun in 2024? Of course. But can you start a profitable channel? Yes. And it was Yahoo Finance that revealed that the creator economy and creator economy businesses are the fastest growing small business type right now. 
So this is exciting because you could in 2024, what are you trying to achieve? Do you want to open up a coffee shop? Do you want to open up a, a flower shop? Do you want to rent some commercial space? Do you want to do, be a franchiser, a franchisee of a subway or do these different things you could do? Or do you want to start a creator business? Well, if you're listening to this video podcast, then you're, you're thinking about getting into YouTube. And a quick tip there is I think one of the most powerful ways you can start YouTube is with a business mindset. Not many start, they think, oh, it's going to be a side hustle. It's going to be a hobby. Fine. But Yahoo Finance said, this is the fastest growing business type. And I found that by shifting your mindset from kind of like, oh, I'm just dabbling in a hobby to I want to dominate this as a business forces you to think a little bit different. Okay, what skills do I need? How, how could I approach this strategically? How could I approach this more intentionally? And so this is the fastest growing small business type, and that is continuing into 2024. That speaks to the opportunity of starting and growing, but also the opportunity of making money. But probably the most significant recent YouTube stat that shook me to the core was Goldman Sachs research revealing that over the next three to four years, the creator economy is going to double and be a half a trillion dollar industry. So let's unpack that. First of all, right now they revealed, and this is Wall Street, people that are smarter than me, smarter than us. Here we are sitting in Las Vegas in our video podcast studio. Uh, you're pretty brilliant. I, I'm glad to be getting to be here with you. But I mean, ultimately, you know, we're sitting here. These are analysts, financial analysts, looking at big data, looking at numbers, looking at all this different stuff. So they have uh, evaluated that the creator economy currently is evaluated at $250 billion. It's kind of one way of looking at how much money is in the system. You know, if you apply this to a different industry, they might say how much, how much money is in restaurants, top line, like how much money is in um, network marketing. It's this big of an industry. So currently, the creator economy is a $250 billion industry. That's a massive number. And if you had just a tiny piece of that, the practicality of earning an extra 10 grand a year or $55,000 a year or whatever is, is more practical than people realize. But okay, it's 250 right now. And what Goldman Sachs Research is looking at Based on all economic factors and things we're looking in this environment, I mean, people, sometimes we get doom and gloom. Oh, is it a recession? What's going to happen next? And of course, different things can happen. But they look at the market. They look at what's happening. They look at the trends. They say, okay, that's going to double in the next four years. The reason this is so insane is because, as you mentioned, I've been on YouTube 17 years. YouTube's only existed for, I think, 19 2005. So you go 2005 to 2014. That's 19 years. I started my first channel for uh, my local church in a small town an hour north of Seattle uh, called Marysville, Washington. It was a terrible channel. I mean, it was fine because it was for a church. But these, in these days, you had a 15-minute upload limit, no custom thumbnails. We were doing everything wrong. Our technology was inferior, all this different stuff. But I just have had the privilege of being in the game a long time personally growing channels, helping others grow. If I'm understanding Goldman Sachs research correctly, they're saying this, I've watched the whole thing from start to now grow for the last 19 years, from 2005. And, and when did the creator economy start? Well, it started, uh, to be fair, it's not just YouTube, this would be the other social platforms. When did it start? It started whenever the first platform, probably YouTube. You had YouTube, Facebook came a little bit later, now X, then eventually Instagram. Those are kind of being, of course, the big ones. YouTube by far and Facebook, I think, are you know maybe the biggest in terms of money. YouTube pays the most as far as creators. Okay, great. So it has taken from 2005 until 2024, that long for the creator economy to become worth $250 billion for that much money to be in the system. And it's crazy. Now, when we think about that, we think about our own experience. We've generated millions of dollars in our company from 21 different income streams. Great. Okay, but what about people listening to this and other people? And they've probably watched YouTubers get famous that are entertaining, education YouTubers doing, doing DIY and Etsy, making money. We get to see our students' results. So we see behind the scenes and see people making a couple grand a month, like a few hundred dollars a month from affiliate marketing. We see how much money is in the system of e-commerce and affiliate marketing. Just you make a video and recommend jeans or fashion or supplements or whatever and how much money's there. Okay, so it's taken 19 years 
for this whole thing to be valued at $250 billion. And Goldman Sachs research says all that's happened in the last 19 years is doubling in the next four. I, that's the point I'm trying to get across. Massive acceleration. Is it too late? It's just getting started. And actually, it's maybe one of the best times to start. If you're looking to get your first thousand subscribers or make your first $1,000 on YouTube, then join our free YouTube challenge that many other small creators have joined and seen tons of success. During this free challenge, Sean is going to share some of the best strategies for growing to your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, as well as making your first $1,000. Just go to tubemonkeychallenge.com or check the link down in the description. Now I would encourage listeners to, to listen until the end because there's, there's no question there's giants to slay. This is not going to be an easy endeavor, but if you have the right skills and develop those and the right strategies, great. But I can't even comprehend that level of acceleration because as much energy and, and data that I can transfer for, through this podcast of what it's been like for me to be on the ride of the last 17 years of YouTube, see what's happened, see the life's changed, see the stories, see peers, friends, interview over 300, 400 different entrepreneurs and video influencers and creators that are making content. It goes on and on. It's it's already mind-blowing what's happened up until this point. To say it's going to double, and even if it's, it's like half of that, the next one, two, three, four years are going to be insane. So I think about it like positioning yourself to ride a wave, positioning yourself now to capitalize, to cash in on what's happening. And of course, it's not just about the money. Our value is you need money for the mission. It's really about impact. It's about people, but you need money to sustain it. So how do I make a profitable YouTube channel? How do I go full-time in the creator economy? How do I work from home? I think the data, the numbers, not opinions, support that getting into this game right now is the right time to start. And what would you say are the pros and the cons to getting started now? Yeah, so uh, I got a couple that are written down here. So I think uh, five pros and five cons. Number one on some of the pros first. Um, you do have audience reach. We already hit it, but YouTube is a vast global platform that will allow you to reach people worldwide, 2.7 billion monthly active users and continuing to grow. Number two, I think, is also uh, creative expression. You know, we do have an episode we can link up in the show notes that maybe goes through 15 or, or, uh, or so reasons. And so you could say reach people. You could say um, make money. But you could also say like history and legacy like you and creative expression. History and legacy, documenting your family, like documenting memories, documenting your transformation, transferring your knowledge into videos so that, God forbid, you, you know, as a father, I think about this. I think about what if I was to get sick or what if something awful would happen? This is why I would get life insurance. Is my wife set up? Is my family set up? But then I also think, man, I want to watch my kids grow up, my one-year-old and my three-year-old. But if I didn't, one of the things that gives me peace is that I actually could father my kids in some digital way by the videos I have on YouTube. Like there's so much different content. It's even why now I want to share more vision and more values. Because again, if worst case scenario, my life's cut short. My sons could learn so much from their dad, could pick up so many different things because of putting videos. And then I think about creative expression, just becoming a creator, not just a consumer. There's Stats that reveal there are negative um, health aspects, mental health aspects to social media. And we have to, like comparison, like, you know, sometimes overconsumption. But here's also what's wild. Adobe did a study. There's also stats that reveal positive mental health correlation to being a creator, creative expression. When we make something, when you shoot, edit, upload, post on the, just the process itself is rewarding. And the process itself is transformational. You become a different person, I believe, in a positive way. It challenges you. It stretches you. Sure, you get uncomfortable, but that's where growth is. There's also the potential to make uh, revenue, and we've got episodes on all the different ways of making money, but there's a real financial opportunity. And in 2024, those opportunities just continue to expand. There's never been more. YouTube just added shopping. There's shopping integration, their own kind of affiliates that's right through the platform. You've got all their different ways of making money from super chats to ad revenue. But then you got brand deals, sponsorships, packaging your own uh, products and programs, um, and a topic for another day, merchandise sales. 
Um, skill development, creating content enhances skills like video editing, storytelling, and digital marketing. And I would say that our stated mission is to have people get direct success on YouTube. Like we wanna help them get results on YouTube. But here's one of the things that gives me great confidence about what we do. If you just embark on this journey and you start to develop skills, it's kind of like a rising tide lifts all ships. You just begin to learn things like you understand marketing more, content more, attention more. It'll make you a better employee. It'll make you a better um, communicator. It just kind of forces you to level up. You develop skills, and yes, skills directly related to YouTube, but it'll influence other areas of your life and other practical areas of business, being a small business owner, if you are one, all kinds of things. Community building, relationships. I mean, one reason why, too, to start a YouTube channel, no joke, maybe you'll find your spouse. Like, maybe maybe you'll find a best friend. I have actually people who I would say are my best friends. One is Alejandro Reyes. We met because of YouTube. And so it's wild now, Alejandro, Sarah, their daughters, the intimate conversations, the memories we've made together, the, the things that have happened. That's because I started a YouTube channel? That is crazy. Like, he's such a homie, he's such a brother, you know, like, and, and the community you could build, the life that you could change, the connections that could be made. So I definitely would encourage, um, you know, we always link up great show notes, but there are even more pros than that. But that's five pros. What are some cons? And we can unpack these. And I think we're doing a two-part episode here. So if, if people are new, make sure to subscribe uh, wherever you listen or watch. And in part two, we'll get really tactical and I want to break down a case study of a theoretical channel I would start and exactly how I could do it and the nuances there. So anyways, look for part two of the episode, but um, some cons. Okay, high competition, for sure. And I do believe the demand for good content is still outpacing supply. As many videos as there are, I never have enough. I watch YouTube every day. And if you're listening to this, you might not. I, when we go home and um, or at the end of a, a day, work from home, when we go downstairs, I get grab my Apple remote, I open up YouTube. Like YouTube is kind of the world I live in and a lot of people are living in that world. It's you watch your favorite video podcasters, all this different stuff. Okay, great. So there's demand, but there is competition. And so with millions of channels, standing out and getting a substantial following can be challenging. Um, and saying that, I mean, man, we could really camp here, but I think the the footnotes could be like, so you gotta ask yourself, how can you position yourself to be different? How can you play to your strengths, minimize your weaknesses? How can you find a unique angle in the market? Or how can you just assess that maybe you're not gonna be the biggest, but how big is the TAM? How big is the total addressable market? Here's what I mean. We encourage people to ask, what's the largest YouTube channel in the topic that you're interested in starting a channel about? For example, we have a tech channel called Think Media. And I think about tech itself, and I think that maybe Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, might be the biggest tech channel. And I think he's at 15 million or 17 million. Who knows? Fact check. I don't know. But it's, you know, so you think about that. Some people look at that, they see it as competition. I actually see that as verification that the market is so big that the opportunity for you to build an 1,000, 3,000, 7,500 per subscribed channel around an aspect of tech monetizing in a few ways, and maybe in the next 12 months, building up your monthly revenue to a few hundred dollars, a few thousand dollars. If you were just going pure creator from scratch, that's that that competition is sometimes kind of overrated. Like now the flip side is you, you do want to assess what are the different market dynamics. Meaning if you were to start a channel, what's the biggest channel on underwater basket weaving? I don't even think there is one. You might be able to be a big fish in a small town, like a dedicated channel on under, uh, a big smish, uh, big fish in a small pond. That's something to think about. So again, subscribe to the podcast and um, we will, and look at our past history. There's a lot of tips for standing out from high competition. I think a second one is it could be time consuming. I think that when you think about starting a YouTube channel, that sometimes we don't think through what is this gonna what is this gonna take? Um, we have a, a teaching that we have in um, some of our paid courses that we do that talks on the um, the five hour YouTube work week. And we get really detailed and productivity, kind of time management and how you could do this. So it's good to know that you can have a very successful YouTube channel, a consistent YouTube channel in five hours or less a week. But I think you still need to budget that. I mean, one, 
hundred percent of us, myself included, could find five hours if we were disciplined and thoughtful and what could we move around. But two, you still have to find the five hours. You actually got to commit. So I think starting, is it too late to start? No. Um, but starting is going to take some things from you. It's going to take time. It's going to take commitment. It's going to take, it doesn't have to take 40 hours a week. You could do it as a side hustle, but producing quality content consistently requires an investment of time and of effort. And you want to budget for that. I think three is changes with the algorithm. Um, the algorithm, there's a lot of principles that remain the same for the algorithm, Minutes matter most, watch time. Can you get people to click on a video and keep them watching? That's the oversimplification. But in a recent episode we did with Lewis Howes, he was talking about how, and, and I think across the board we've seen this, that in the last six months, a lot of people are like, my views are down, videos, certain videos the way that they used to perform aren't performing the same way. You could definitely see like there's certain algorithm things. How is YouTube prioritizing shorts? How does it work with long form? How do the two work together? And, and maybe another way to put number three is the con would be learning curve is learning how YouTube works, learning the different skill sets that uh, are required to have success on YouTube. We're not here trying to make this overly simple or say like, this is, this is gonna be easy. There's something about learning how to speak and communicate, learning how to edit, learning about how to capture. All you need is your smartphone and editing could be simple, but that's still a learning curve, learning how YouTube works. I think number four, and this is a big one, is is negative feedback, um, is, an, is a level of an emotional toll that could hit you by being on YouTube. Just different, sometimes it's direct negative feedback, you get a comment that hurts. Sometimes it's a little bit imagined, but kind of real. Oh man, I'm like putting myself out there, like what are people thinking about me? And maybe somebody says a negative comment, but then you kind of amplify it. You're like, is that what everybody thinks? My video got, you know, 100 views. And I got a, three positive comments, but somebody said a kind of a mean thing is, are people just watching me and judging me? You just can really get all in your feels, all in your head. And so you're ultimately exposing yourself to public scrutiny and negative comments can be a downside and they can be something that you do want to prepare for. We encourage you to have thick skin, but a soft heart. We often quote Aristotle who said, if you, know, if you want to avoid criticism, just be nothing, say nothing, and do nothing. So to avoid criticism on YouTube, not starting a channel on YouTube would be one way to do it because that's you know, it's not an issue. But more than anything, I think that's something to prepare for, to develop mental toughness, um, to be connected to a strong community, probably digital for most. Um, that's one th people, thing that people love about um, our like VRA community is even just a place where you can relate and process and like, yeah, that was kind of mean, but it did kind of hurt. But like, yeah, let's push through it and and to have some level of, of encouragement happening. You'll probably discover that your spouse, your partner, your friends, and anybody in your world that is not a content creator, they won't even get it. They can't relate and you'll feel pretty lonely because they can't relate. And that's not, they're not bad for that. But you know, they also you're like that, I put a lot of work in that video and that comment really hurt. And your husband's like, what's the big deal? And you're like, well, I know it's not a big deal, but like it is, I'm thinking about it, you know? So I think, um, you know, trying to put some answers to these cons by thinking about, okay, do you have a good circle? You know, can you put yourself in an environment with people that can relate to just the different things as you grow? And then uh, another one could be like revenue inconsistency. I think getting to the point of monetization, I think to prepare yourself that, in the beginning of any endeavor, start a small business, start a side hustle, start a YouTube channel. The amount of work you put in at the beginning radically exceeds the amount of revenue you make at the beginning, often being zero at the beginning, and even for quite a long time. For some, they can grow very quickly or make money in a relatively short amount of time, but maybe it's three months or six months before you get monetized or make some affiliate income. Maybe it's a year. Are you willing to put that work in? I think the important mindset to have is that right there is you got to shift from a nine to five mentality and employee mentality, which you're just used to. Like I went and worked at my job, you know, for eight hours and then I made 20 bucks an hour and, and I got time for money. Cool. You know, I, my background's in waiting tables. I worked at Red Robin for 10 years from 17 to 27, I'm 40 now. And so I'm waiting tables. So I knew if I double shift on a Saturday that I could go 
wait tables at Red Robin, serve people fries, serve people burgers, drink a rock star or a monster to like push through the whole day and usually walk away from $100, $150, $200 in tips from that one day of work. A crazy day. That was kind of the revenue there, depending on my sales and how well it was tipped, plus my hourly. And then I would go home and side hustle on YouTube and make zero. And then eventually I got my first uh, paycheck from the Amazon affiliate program and I made $2.12. Maybe by that time after I posted 200 videos. So economically, the one person could look at that and be like, you're wasting your time. Like, what are you even doing? This is, it's not worth your time time. And the short-sighted mindset, that would be true. But the long side, the, the, the long view entrepreneurial mindset would say, no, 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 I'm putting extra work and I'm underpaid at the start so that as I break through and once I break through that I could be overpaid in the future. That is the difference between kind of the employee mentality and the business owner mentality. Because what do business owners also know? The average small business is not profitable for 18 to 24 to 36 months. Are you willing to go a year, two years, three years to get a project off the ground? Again, there's always different unicorn kind of stories and we have radical certain students that do certain things, but generally you want to kind of baseline your mindset to say, am I willing to really put the work in? Again, if you want to start in 2024 with the intent of being successful, I think it's important to go in with the right uh, the right mind mindset. And so revenue could be delayed, but that's normal. And it's delayed in everything. Results and working out are delayed too. You have like New Year's resolutions. Like, man, I went to the gym for like two weeks. I don't have a six pack yet. Like I can't like bench 400 pounds yet. Well, of course. So I think going into it, man, I'm going to put the work, work in and I, I want to learn new skills. The cons are overcomable, but I think it is approaching them with the cons, high performers actually perform best by not being too overly optimistic. We were talking about in one of our team and core values that uh, there's like a quote that says, good leaders have endless optimism about the future, but they also have like a brutal understanding of reality. They say, what are the facts? What are the reality? But they look at reality with optimism. So we're not, it's not being delusional or even being overly optimistic, but I do think you have to have that optimism, that faith, that fight to keep going by being like, these are some of the things that I got to overcome. And in doing so, what am I going to need to do to overcome? And of course, that's what this two-part series is about. And uh, that's actually, I mean, we have a a web class that people can watch. We can link that up uh, in the description as well. That'll get into some real tactics because that's our mission. We want to help a million purpose-driven people create a full-time living on YouTube and experience that success without losing their soul, which let me put one other con in there. One of the cons could actually be success you're not ready for. And so that's a topic for another day. But sometimes, you know, what if some people are thinking, can I start a YouTube channel and could it be successful? It's a great question. Let's get you there. But the question nobody is asking is, am I ready for YouTube success? Am I actually, am I ready for some of the momentum that could come? Am I ready for now some of the pressure? Am I ready that, wow, a lot of money's coming in, but also there's some negative feedback and I have to develop a new mindset and skill set. That's what, of course, we want to help people with. And can I experience, I'm moving from maybe a more structured, lower risk lifestyle into a more uncomfortable, higher risk. And, you know, when I was doing some research, we'll land the plane, but that revenue inconsistency is interesting. Or, or there's not maybe just how long does revenue take, but also that revenue inconsistency. Being a creator, um, it doesn't come with healthcare if you do it full time. It doesn't come with the 401k unless you set it up yourself. It doesn't come with the stability of my boss will pay me this salary or this hourly wage pretty much no matter what, so long as I maintain my job. There's maybe higher revenue, or there is in certain months of the year, lower at other times. There's certain seasons. So there's the direct skill sets we help people learn, editing, camera confidence, um, you know, how to get views, hack the algorithm, all that stuff. Then there's all this other thing, like how do I manage my money? How do I, you know, get better at some of these things? And so there's pros, there's cons, but it's definitely not too late. And let me just land the plane. Once we've landed the plane, we are taxing to the, to the gate right now, um, but I, I would say, and not just my opinion, I think it was Mr. Beast that said, YouTube is the most generous algorithm on the internet if you know how the algorithm works. 
And because it's really shifted from subscribers actually mattering less, more to what people are interested in, if you learn the skill set of title, topic, packaging, you know, editing and, and these things and, and stick around, we'll, we'll help you learn all that. Brand new channels are growing rapidly. And so it, it's not like, okay, it's the haves and the haves not. If you have subscribers, then, then you're good. In fact, this could be revealed that some even older channels with lots of subscribers are struggling because they're not pivoting and adapting to how YouTube is working now. Flip side, it makes me think of like Larry Chung, one of our students. In the recent, like last couple of years, like this current era of YouTube, again, oh, I, I, I wish I would have started 10 years ago. I wish I would have started, you know, eight years ago. I wish I started, whatever. No, start today. Uh, he started and in six months, he grew 53,000 subscribers. He got almost a million views. He is in personal finance, which is very competitive, but it's huge because everybody deals with money. So back to that thing, like, what about competition? How many other personal finance channels are there? Probably a million, but it's possible, 53,000 subscribers, and he only posted 14 videos. So zero to 53,000, now he's got a silver play button, one of our VRA students. Um, I think there's, there, not just I think, there is a major opportunity to start a brand new channel from scratch and grow, especially when you understand growth principles. And you know, we'll talk about that in the next episode and on the web class and things like that. And so they, I think the age old quote, when's the best time to plant a tree 10 years ago? When's the second best time to plant a tree today? When's the best time to you know, start a business five, 10 years ago? When's the second best time today? When's the best time to chase your dreams? You've been waiting, you've been on the sidelines. Well, five or 10 years ago would have been the good time to chase your dreams, but you've been waiting. Well, then, then let's get started today. And uh, all my friends and peers that also, you know, YouTube experts, this question gets asked every single year. We probably answer it every single year. And, and we want to answer it with full transparency and integrity. And it's not too late to start. That's just a fact. So punch fear in the face, punch perfectionism in the face and press record. Yes, it's absolutely not too late to start. And if you want the strategies for um, the real tactics for growing a YouTube channel in 2024, make sure you're subscribed to this channel because in the next episode, Sean's gonna be breaking down an actual case study of what he would be doing um, to grow a YouTube channel in 2024 starting now. And so that's gonna be heavy tactical, giving you those next steps that you need in order to really win in 2024. So uh, we'll see you in that next episode. Make sure that you subscribe and we'll see you there.